Welcome back to the garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. This is part three of a very detailed tour video we're doing of our garden. It is about uh, three years in the works at this point. This was a uh, new project uh, that was basically a clean slate back here. There's a couple. There's a couple things that were here, and, and you'll you'll see them as we go. About one thing a video uh, was already here in the garden, uh, but we've really 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 changed this space over time we're in the back garden this is again the third video there are a lot of different plants here that's why this video is broken down into so many pieces we're definitely plant collectors and there's a lot of one of a kinds and so uh, some of some of these spaces have really come together nicely and filled in some areas are still going to need a little bit of rearranging here or there a lot of the plants here in the garden have stories and we'll uh, tell you those stories uh, as those plants come about. Not going over very many of the containers out here because we just did a series of container planting videos and went through most of the containers out here. Uh, there's a scented geranium down here below me though that smells great. And this uh, Dianella uh, on the steps, which just actually finished blooming, this is another plant that's just taken a tremendous amount of abuse in a container uh, for us and just has just really performed quite well. I highly recommend, uh, th those of you down in Florida will grow Dianella, of course, in your, in your gardens uh, as a garden plant. By the time you get up here, we do need to uh, think about protecting them occasionally in zone seven. And so we have it as a container plant, beautiful strappy blue-green foliage. And again, it had these little delicate blue flowers on it uh, just a week or two ago. So we'll jump down uh, into the garden down below us. That blue spruce, that little dwarf blue spruce is definitely one of the stars of the garden. Uh, a tiny little thing, um, it, and again, it's a dwarf blue spruce. It's grown, looks like to me, about two inches so far this year, which is about what I would expect to grow. Tricky growing blue spruce here in the south. Uh, we have, uh, there are a few here or there around the city of Raleigh that I see, but for the most part, uh, they don't perform all that well. This one's it needs some direct sun to keep that blue color, but it really can't take our 15 hour days here during the summertime when it's 95 to 100 degrees. So this one's in a spot where the sun's on it for maybe two and a half, three hours when it's high in the sky and then it's back in the shade pretty quickly. And that seems to be working out uh, just fine. There's a hosta behind it that was one that was already here. I don't know the name of it, but it is a, it is a nice one. It's got like a, a little, just a little narrow yellow edge on it. The Camellia sasanqua that's to the left of that, that uh, really lustrous green foliage evergreen shrub, that's a Camellia sasanqua called October Magic Orchid. It's one of the ones in the Southern Living Plant Collection. They have a great collection of Camellia sasanquas and uh, Japonica that we'll see in one of the uh, later videos as well that, uh, uh, that's very, very long bloomed. But this uh, October Magic Orchid has a kind of a a lavender pink and white flower on it. A really striking variety. We have October Magic Ruby and I really love October Magic Ruby. It's a very clean plant just like this one is. No, no spots on the leaves, just perfect foliage. But in a darker space, October Magic Orchid just rules the day. It just, it just when it's in bloom, it's just so bright and vivid. Uh, in, in this little dark corner over here. I'm not naming the specific varieties of annuals out here, but I will tell you that the purple one you're looking at is a Lysianthus. And then there's some Kufia, that uh, pinkish uh, flower that's over the top. Kufia is one of the absolute favorites for pollinators out here. We have five or six varieties of Kufia. Uh, there's some Angelonia, and then there's some Pentas in that line. They're a little bit smaller than they should be here in June because we've had such cool nights uh, thus far this season. Uh, that little gold conifer, that's fern spray gold, uh, Hinoki cypress, or uh, that, <laughs> Steph said, I put it there because we didn't have any chartreuse there. Because <laughs> we don't know, we never have enough chartreuse in this garden, which, you know, if you watch the series of videos, you're going to know it's not true. We have uh, chartreuse things everywhere, but you get these little shadowy spots like this happens to be. That's going to be a standout over the next couple years in that space. There's a green sedum under this palm that's just absolutely out of control. I think it's gonna be hard to actually get rid of it. I've cut it down about half to its half its size. It ate a gold sedum that we had planted together. The first year it was really beautiful, the green and gold together. 
And then this green one just decided to be a giant bully and has, uh, has taken over the space. They, we, we filmed this one over at, um, um, over at Jeremy Smith's house. I think it's the same variety now that I'm looking at it. His has some control added to it because it's a little dry where his is. This is one of the more moist spaces in this garden. And because of that, I think that's helped it, helped it just run everywhere. It's planted around a windmill palm that's quite happy here. It survived our, you know, the, the December freeze uh, quite well. It's really hard to cover this thing. You know, I attempted to put something over it and it blows off immediately. If you pin something down on it, if, if you know, it'd be easy to end up damaging it by trying to protect it. It's one of those things. I've done it before. I've, I've been doing this for 37 years. I've hurt plants by trying to protect them uh, with covers and that kind of thing. But it, you know, it came through it came through beautifully really i expect to really start to get some height out of this thing pretty quickly now it's taken a couple years for it to find its footing it was in a container for a little while uh, went in the ground and it's this season i can see that we've it's adding it's adding growth much quicker than it has there's a laura petalum right here i think we i don't know how many laura petalum we actually have i think just three we have a very large growing uh, purple one that was in the first one. We have a dwarf purple one that will be in another one. And then this, this is Emerald Snow Laura Petalum. This is a Southern Living Plant Collection one. It's a white flowering green foliage Laura Petalum uh, that people wouldn't think about growing because everybody's so excited about all the purple foliage ones. But this one is a standout. Uh, it really is incredibly compact. We haven't had to do any pruning on it. I'll take a branch like this and just cut it back in here. Uh, same thing here, you know, I'll make three or four cuts on it this season to keep it in this kind of free flowing form uh, that it's in. Blooms white, it's already bloomed once, it will bloom again in the fall. And it has this kind of uh, bluish green foliage on it. I really, really like this plant. I think it's a standout here in the garden and uh, uh, it's just a perfect sized evergreen ornamental plant. You'll see containers in these videos that aren't necessarily where they're going. When the patio is complete, we'll going to rearrange the containers uh, like they will uh, be in the future. This one does have a pretty cool Chinese sassafras in it that's uh, hit the ground running in that container. That was a gift from, uh, uh, I don't even remember where we got that thing from. That was from, a, rare plant oh, it was a rare plant auction that I got that from like a couple years ago. I remember that was a, that was a, a going away gift from a, from a, from a rare plant auction. Everybody, everybody got one of those on the way out the door is where I actually got that one from. That, uh, this is a Salvia Greggii called Furman's Red. And all of these Salvia Greggii here in our area will come out and bloom heavily, which is what this one's in the process of doing, or uh, has, and it has spent some of its flowers already. Then they tend to slow down during the summertime and then pick back up uh, in the fall. This is called Gonfastigma. It's a South African native. We thought it would have been dead long ago, and it, but it survived the 13 degree night. It's a blue foliage plant that's coming right up through the middle of that uh, salvia. It just continues to hold on out here. It's one that we had no idea whether it would survive out here or not. It's done okay. It's just here, right? It's just here. Uh, this is a Stella Ruby Magnolia. Uh, it's already bloomed heavily one time. You can see the upright narrow habit that Stella Ruby has, uh, Evergreen. Uh, just been a great performer in the garden. I've talked about it a lot over the last couple of years because it's really, you know, we, we planted it here with the intention of having an upright, narrow, evergreen thing that bloomed occasionally and it's just been perfect. Some things, you know, you plant and again, you have to think about moving them around later or whatever, but this Stella Ruby Magnolia is a fantastic performer and whether it bloomed or not, look at this thing. It's just really, really beautiful. Took no damage during the uh, December freeze uh, at all, and it was way bigger than I could have pr possibly protected. Uh, coming back uh, into the back, this is a spider's web fatsia. Uh, this is one that I, I planted at the wrong time of year. Uh, three, two winters ago, I planted this in like October or November knowing that it was marginal and then of course it got damaged during the winter because of course it did it hadn't been in the ground for any length of time it grew back out of that last year put on the tiniest amount of growth last year it has literally come out and doubled in size this spring it has been really really happy with these cool temperatures what you'll notice is the newest growth on this is whiter and as it matures you know you'll see it 
you know, lose some of that color, which I actually like because it ends up creating this kind of two-tone uh, look to it. It will get flowers on it. Uh, the bees absolutely go bonkers over Fatsia flowers. This one doesn't bloom quite as much as the green uh, cultivars, but it does bloom. But it's such a striking plant. This boxwood I'll be talking more about later in the year. There are four of them out here in the garden that you're going to see during this series of tours. I haven't talked about them yet because they're not out on the market yet, but they are blight resistant boxwood varieties from Europe that have been tested for a very, very long time against boxwood blight. So really excited about this group. Uh, there's four different varieties and they all have a different growth habit. So whatever you needed a boxwood for, uh, there's gonna be one of these for it. But again, I'll be talking more about those in the fall when they're actually available. There's a hosta alongside the Fatsia back here called Summon Substance, very large leafed uh, hosta. It's been around for a long, long time. This is one of those uh, old varieties that, you know, despite the fact that there's so many new great hostas, um, you know, there's hardly anything out on the market better than that, you know, all these, year, all these years later. There's a Mahonia uh, in front of it that's, uh, you can see it's a low, wide spreading Mahonia. This one's called Beijing Beauty. Uh, bloomed beautifully all winter. In fact, this thing's probably bloomed, I would say, half the months that it's been in the ground. Uh, it blooms probably ultimately five or six months out of the year. Interesting plant, beautiful blue-green foliage, really compact habit. I might come back in here and, and narrow it just a bit in the next few weeks, do a little bit of cutting on it, but uh, really great ornamental plant. And it, this is, that area around the porch is pretty, is a little wetter than other places. It starts to get dry again as we go, you know, head back out of here and Mahonias are perfect in those dry shade conditions. Beside the Mahonia is an Akuba called Hosaba Hoshifu. Uh, there's a video on the channel for when this went into the ground that was planted, uh, I'd say close to two years ago at this point. It only grew a little bit last year. This year it's probably doubled in height already. Uh, I'm going to come in here and tip prune this. Anytime I get something that's going, you know, tall and narrow like that, unless I'm trying to have it be tall and narrow, I'll come in here and just tip prune it uh, right off the top, just a little bit of growth taken off the top, and that'll force some growth uh, down toward the bottom. It's a great, great, showy Akuba. It's got a slightly narrower leaf than other Akubas, and then a lot more of the spotting uh, than gold dust. Um, really, really beautiful plant. This Wajil is kind of funny because uh, it was one that was supposed to be a dwarf and it's it was it's a it's a trial plant that we we had we had taken just to take a look at uh it was from europe and it was supposed to be one that was really compact and low growing uh it immediately got six feet tall <laughs> so that can happen you know when you're trialing plants in a colder area and you haven't tried them in a uh you know in a different climate we have a much longer growing season maybe than where it came from it's an interesting interesting plant uh, and it bloomed uh, again but it was just tall and stretched and and uh, and narrow so uh, you know I don't don't know what'll go on with this plant but it's not one that was available anyway it's just an interesting story to tell we have a lot of you know I talked about in the last video we have a deer coming around and sampling things here and there because we're connected to a couple college campuses and then a greenway system and then an airport area and a in a big park and all those things are connected together and they actually allow the deer to get all the way here and we're not that far from downtown <laughs> so we're in a very urban area but it doesn't mean that we don't have the occasional deer coming through here which can do some significant damage uh, pretty quickly and then rabbits you know our enemy as well but we do have things like yarrow i think we got this yarrow parker's gold in a four pack steph planted them right here along the uh, edge of the path and they've just absolutely taken off they're thriving the pollinators absolutely love these and it's one of those plants that the deer won't eat the rabbits won't eat you know you can select plants you know that will uh you know they won't repel them but they certainly you know it's something that will bloom out here that we just don't have to worry about uh, having those things grazing on there are a couple of uh, salvia uh, gregii a little further around. These actually came from Ram and Tom Giberson's beautiful garden down in Athens, Georgia. If you followed the channel, there's a playlist on the channel called the Giberson Garden. If you haven't seen that garden, it's, it's, worth, it's worth taking a look at those videos. It's a beautiful place, but Ram, 
you know, if you leave your, uh, you leave your trunk unlocked when you go to rams, you're gonna, it's gonna be full of plants when you leave. So uh, there are several plants that you'll see in these tour videos that came from them. Again, these, these types of salvias will bloom heavily in the spring into, until it gets really, really hot, then they'll slow down. As soon as the nighttime temperatures start to cool off in the fall, they'll pick back up again. Again, we're not covering very many of the containers in these, but this is a container uh, that we didn't show in the container planting videos. This is a monkey puzzle right here. And if you, you know, ever drive through Florida, you see these architectural uh, interesting trees. Uh, there's actually, they're actually hardy enough here in protected spaces in zone 7B on the edge of 8A. There's one over at the Ralston, but it's been stung a bunch of times over the years and it's more shrubby than it is, you know, architectural and, you know, narrow like they are down in Florida. Uh, this one was given to us on a trip down to South Carolina recently. So again, another plant with a story. The Carex that's in the container with it is called Feather Falls. This one's rapidly become one of the more popular Carex on the market. You'll see a couple more in the videos uh, as we continue. Feather Falls gets a little bigger than some of the other, uh, uh, some of the other Carex and, you know, probably in about this height range and about this width range in the ground. We saw that we saw really kind of a full grown one down in one of Alan Armitage's videos uh, touring his house. He had a really beautiful Feather Falls Carex. That's where I actually saw it the first time a couple years ago. And now uh, they're kind of they're kind of everywhere because it's, it is such a great, great plant. This is an Elysium that we got on a trip down to Ted Stevens uh, nurser, Nurseries Caroliniana. Uh, down, also down in uh, uh, South Carolina, right on the edge of Georgia, uh, in North Augusta. Uh, you go back and look at that video if you get a chance. We really went through some interesting, you know, kind of rare plants. He has incredible rare plants down there. Uh, and this is a, a variegated Elysium. Uh, quite striking. We didn't put it in the ground for a long time. Uh, so we abused it for a little while, but now it's found its home and it's got a lot of new growth on it. I think I will uh, stake it up here at some point. That's what this uh, little bamboo is here for, but beautiful plant. The last thing in this little bed uh, that wraps around from the uh, porch steps where we started the video is this Vitex called Summertime Blues. This is a Southern Living Plant Collection one. It's about to start flowering now. We limbed it up into a tree. Last year it was branched all the way down to the bottom and it was multi-trunked. Now it's become a little tree form. Uh, tons and tons of flower buds on this thing. It's got a really interesting growth habit. Uh, and you know, I like this plant a lot. It's gonna need a little bit of control every winter to keep it in the spot that it's in. Uh, great plant, another one that's deer resistant and rabbit resistant and all those kinds of things. I actually have a kind of collection here between the Elysium and the Salvia and, and a few of the other things here are all kind of deer, this is my deer resistant area uh, and rabbit resistant area, but uh, really love Vitex. Uh, once they start to put, you know, these flowers start to open, the bees will absolutely be all over these native bees, non-native bees, everything uh, loves Vitex. We worked our way from the steps uh, around here and toward what is the north side of the property. There's a chain link fence along the outside over there that has some dahlias on it. Those dahlias will be in the fourth uh, tour video. We're gonna finish up uh, with the area around the vegetable garden and the vegetable garden itself. The vegetable garden is looking great. Our cool season vegetables are still giving us cool season, or still giving us, uh, we're still getting lettuce in what is it today, June 14th or something like that uh, as we're filming this. And I just can't believe how much lettuce, and it's not even bitter, we've been eating it uh, con you know, pretty consistently. Normally, at least by now, it would have at least turned bitter if nothing else, if it hadn't have bolted. Uh, but tomatoes have reached the top of the uh, of the uh, of the fences back here. Potatoes are looking good. Anyway, that's the vegetable garden. This orange rocket barberry is in a container. It's been in the same container for a couple years, two and a half years probably. If you watch the video that we did up at Jay Sifford's garden up in West Jefferson, he has five of these that he's allowed to get some height on them and they're incredibly beautiful in that garden. It's just really, really wild. Again, not going through the containers, but I wanted to point out that orange rocket barberry, which we had in a bit too much shade the last couple of years. We've moved it over here where there's a little more sun and it has a lot more color this time around. So this basically, the front of the vegetable garden is mostly meant for herbs, but we have some other things in here to draw in pollinators to this space. Now, there's some boxwood basil down here, which is very interesting. We had, um, this one right here got stepped on, so I don't know if it was a deer or us or a wheelbarrow or whatever it was, but these little boxwood basils are super, super interesting. 
Uh, there's some asparagus planted, newly planted back here. It'll be a couple years before we probably get any, uh, any amount of asparagus to amount uh, to anything. There are five butterfly bushes in this space, little dwarf butterfly bushes. Called, this is called, they're called butterfly candy. There's five different colors. Uh, there's a website for these. There was, um, that video went up maybe a month ago. Since then, every night's been super cool. And they've done a lot of growing. They've settled in beautifully, uh, but they're just getting started uh, flowering. So I think it's going to be another, uh, another week of these 85, 90 degree temperatures that we're finally having. Uh, and they'll just be on fire out here. But these are little dwarfs, only get about this big. Uh, really interesting, five different colors. If you see these at retail, they come in a container that's whatever color the flower is on them, which is, which is kind of interesting. There are strawberries here, which we have not gotten a strawberry off of in the two years they've been planted here because we have rabbits and deer that come along and, you know, if they form any kind of, uh, they form any kind of fruit, but they flower uh, constantly. This area had all of our dahlias in it and we moved them back to the fence, but there are still dahlias trying to come up. We left enough of the tubers in place that they're trying to come up. So we're continuing to pop them out of the ground and just giving them away at this point because we've got so many of them uh, over there and they're duplicates of whatever's over there. Uh, anyway, there's a dwarf pomegranate that was just planted uh, and uh, settling in nicely. It's only been in the ground maybe a week or so. There's some new Everillo Carex that were placed in here. We've added a few more Everillo Carex around the garden in general. You'll see a couple other spots as we go, but and we have some that are pretty big uh, at this point. Another dahlia that has uh, popped back up from our removal of the dahlias. Uh, there's an Agastache here that we did from seed. I don't remember the name of it, if I remember it between now and then. Um, it was from a, a seed, seed pack from Baker Creek. If we remember it between now and then, I'll put the name up, but it's been blooming beautifully. And it was one that we, again, we did from seed here at the house and getting to finally getting to some herbs in the herb area other than the basil. Uh, there's some lemon thyme. Uh, in this spot. Great little ground cover, really. Nice flowers, pollinators absolutely love it. And of course, you know, it's lemon thyme. We have a few can't talk about them yet plants in the garden. Uh, in this video, you saw the boxwoods. Uh, there's four boxwoods out here in the garden that um, again will be fall when we'll see those better boxwoods released. And this interesting, super interesting sky pencil that uh, I'll get to talk about in the fall. This, this will become available. Uh, probably next spring, uh, but just, you know, again, I don't even know that it has a name yet. Uh, okay, this, we have some sorrel. There's another boxwood basil. Then some, there's several uh, patches of sorrel in here. And then there's some red vein sorrel right behind it. We have our mint in a container, which I highly advise if you're gonna grow any kind of, any kind of mint because it can take over your garden very, very quickly. But that one's contained in a container. Occasionally we move the container out of there, make sure it hadn't gotten out into the garden space anywhere. That one probably just needs a haircut uh, at this point. It's put on a lot, a lot of growth this spring. Container with a boxwood topiary that we've, I've created in a few videos. This uh, rosemary really took that December freeze quite hard. So we gave it a big time haircut and it just really hasn't been hot enough to get it to come back out from that. They, you know, this is a plant that would really prefer it to be 95 degrees, probably slightly dry. And then I think it'll start to put on, it has a little new growth on it, but not as much as I would like to have seen at this point. There's some sage. Sage is great for, you know, we'll use it as an herb, but it's also just great for pollinators. I mean, the, the you know, the flowers are, uh, you know, amazing on it, and it's salvia officinalis. You're going to see a lot of salvia in these videos, uh, but salvia officinalis is sage. I've got a, a diamond spire gardenia uh, in this spot. We have one more over there that we're going to move to a new location. It's getting slightly crowded out. Just put this one in the ground, and it's doing the typical gardenia thing where it'll lose a few leaves uh, as it's trying to flower, and it is budded up like crazy. It's had a few flowers already, but it's got a lot more trying to come uh, right now. Let's see, what else am I missing? There's some flat leaf parsley, uh, more of the sorrel, more of the red vein sorrel, and uh, another flat leaf parsley over that direction. 
and then this bronze fennel, which, um, you know, this thing can ultimately end up being a slight bully in the garden. It probably will need to be thinned out at some point. Blooms beautifully. Pollinators absolutely love it. Haven't had any, we haven't had anything, um, there's been no caterpillars on it yet. It was one of the reasons we had it out here was to uh, uh, hopefully have it be a host plant. Uh, but it has not been yet. And again, this thing, there's this couple seedlings here or there. There's one back here in the garden. This is one to keep an eye on if you put it in your garden to make sure that you're keeping some control of it and not losing control. I'm gonna dig this one out at some point, probably thin it down to just one clump again and just replant it. Uh, I do like the texture. It's an interesting plant out here in the garden, but uh, again, it's a, uh, it can be a little bit of a bully out here. So that's it. That's uh, tour video number three. Uh, we'll jump in and uh, you'll see number four coming up pretty soon as we go through uh, everything that's out here. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, thanks for following along.